Welcome to another day. It's 66 days. Today's video, we're going to be talking about actually calibrating and setting color accuracy on Ambibox dynamic bias lighting. This is a follow up video to a tutorial that I made, and you can go check those out. So I'll have a link to that video in the description, and I'll have a link to a playlist that I made that contains all of my Ambibox videos. You can take a look at demos of how it works some uh, some tutorials that I recommend if you're having trouble getting it set up in the first place, and then some calibration tools that I've made for various aspect ratio monitors. This video assumes you already have the Ambibox software up and running, that whatever mode you want working, whether it's a static light, it's dynamic, it's um, screen capture, you have all of that configured and set up. If you don't have that set up yet, check out the Ambibox Setup Guide tutorial. There's two of them here. The first one was originally developed for a 21 by 9 inch monitor. It was really just made for myself, for my future self, in case I forgot how to do something. The Ambibox Setup Guide tutorial updated is longer, but it goes into more detail, and I think it's easier to see the menus and some of the buttons that are going on. So. You can watch either or both of those and to help get things configured. And then for the purposes of this video, we're going to be utilizing these three at the bottom here, the 16, 21, and 32 by 9 aspect ratio calibration tools. So before we get started at all, I recommend you grab a piece of paper and you write down the number of the RGB light behind your monitor that corresponds with each corner. If you use an L bracket, so you don't actually have a corner piece, then write down the two LEDs that are the ones that make up the corner. The reason for this is because we're going to be making modified adjustments to individual LED lights, and having a reference point makes it a lot easier to figure out exactly which light you're editing especially if you have a lot of lights and the color can get kind of washed out and so you need to make minor adjustments to multiple lights before you actually see any sort of change. Just kind of a heads up. The next thing that we need to do is get rid of the taskbar on our Windows computer. Now for most people the taskbar is at the bottom but it can be on the top left or right and if you've never hidden the taskbar before it can be a little bit weird of how do you get rid of it. So you just bring your cursor down to the taskbar, right click it, and the very bottom of the pop-up menu that appears in Windows 10 is taskbar settings. When you click that, a Windows box is going to open up for settings, and it's going to be for the taskbar. The second one down is automatically hide the taskbar in desktop mode. If you click that, it's going to hide your taskbar unless your cursor is on the edge of the screen where the taskbar is located. So in my case, the taskbar is at the bottom of the screen, so it will hide the taskbar, see it just vanished, and if I want to bring it back, I need to bring my cursor down to the bottom. At the end of this, if you're the type of person that likes to have the taskbar visible at all times, you can go back down to the bottom, right click on it, choose taskbar settings, pop it up, turn this off. Okay, but for now, we want the taskbar to be hidden. So we're going to hide it. Once we've hidden the taskbar, we're going to pick the video that is the aspect ratio for our, for our monitor. In my case, I use a 21 by 9 aspect ratio monitor, so that's the video I'm going to use. And I'm going to pause it real quick because I want to point out two things that will be helpful as you work through this whole process of calibrating your lights. The first is, in the description, I've made quick links to each of the different tests. So if you want to go back and retry a specific one, I've got quick links to them. I also put in a link to the tutorial in case you can't remember how to do something or you just want a refresher on something. I also put links to the other aspect ratios. So if you've got multiple monitors and you've got Ambibox set up on different monitors or you, know, you have it set up in different ways, you have quick access to them. It's just there if you need it. The next thing is the subscribe button. Click subscribe. Thank you. Like my videos. Thank you. The next thing is settings. If you go up, down, if you hit the gear in the bottom right hand corner, you'll have two options quality and playback speed. 
I have this set up for 4K. Um, I think it's probably overkill for most people, but it will give the most uniform color the video can provide. But set it based on what your internet can actually provide and get that all set up. The next is playback speed. I made this video to try and keep it under 10 minutes so it wouldn't be absolutely horrific to use, but I also appreciate from my own setup in using this video that the speed that this goes through is better as a demo at the end to make sure everything is calibrated the way I want than an actual tool for configuring it. But thankfully YouTube has a playback speed adjuster, and so I recommend that you Either watch it at normal speed just to get an appreciation for what all the tasks are going to involve, but when you actually start doing your calibrations, set it to 0.5 or set it to 0.25. If you set it to point, if you set it to normal, I think it's a little too fast to actually make the adjustments you need, and you're still going to end up having to pause the video. The goal of going with a slower speed is it gives you just enough time to actually calibrate everything or with some of the tests, you're looking all around your monitor to kind of get an appreciation for uniform color. And so by having a slower speed, it gives you just more time to assess the lights versus your monitor versus your backlight. So pick the one that's most appropriate for you. I recommend the slower speeds, especially when you're first calibrating. So I'm gonna set it to 0.5 for right now. And then I'm gonna go into full screen. You can either hit the box in the lower right or as of right now, YouTube lets you hit the F key. So it's paused, I've got the bars up. In a moment, I'm gonna start playing this video and I'm gonna alt tab to my Ambibox settings. So let's play it and then I alt tab over here and I'm gonna do two things. I wanna give you an update on maximum frames per second. I find that that is um, excessive. It uses more CPU utilization and with this tool I've been monitoring and I find that I really sit somewhere between 20 and 25 frames per second most of the time. So I set it to 27 frames per second for me, because for me, that is the optimal CPU usage to actual performance that's balanced out. You can set it to whatever makes sense to you based on your usage. And of course, if you find that it's too low and you feel like it's getting capped, you can always raise it. Just know that increasing frames per second does have a negative impact on total CPU utilization. It uses more CPU. Okay, that said, let's move on to additional configuration of zones. This additional configuration of zones tab, it's the second tab under intelligent backlight display. Now you'll notice as this moves through the video that each color has a hexadecimal six digit code. That's the hexadecimal decimal for the value of the color you're seeing. So for quick reference, you can look up and compare it to other things that you may have, or if you want to be able to get an appreciation for what color it's actually on the screen, it's right there. Okay, so remember when I said you want to write down the corners and have references for where RGB lights are. On the left side of this additional configurations of zones are the capture zones. Uncheck for all zones. If this box is checked, any changes to the settings it is adjusted to all lights and chances are you have a couple of lights on your strip that are slightly different hue, slightly different color and they need to be adjusted individually so uncheck this. If you check this box in the future and then make a change it is on all lights so any changes you made in the past are going to be erased so just keep that in mind. So you can adjust the brightness and individual hue of each individual LED and the capture zones run through here. And as you can see, I have 131 LEDs on my monitor. That makes it great for in terms of looking at the experience of playing games and watching movies, but it makes it nearly impossible for trying to figure out which LED is associated with which number for calibration. I use my reference values for my corners and I can then kind of make small adjustments. You may also find that adjusting one individual LED doesn't help very much because that color is being washed out by neighboring LEDs. So you may find that you need to adjust a couple of them before it actually pops up and matches the color that you want. But as long as for all zones is unclicked, 
each light can have its own setting and calibration. Once that's done, you can move over to general settings zones. Keep in mind that for this, you're setting specific profiles. So if you only have one profile, it's just screen capture, that's great. But if you are somebody that likes to have a static light for specific tasks, you may find yourself adjusting the color of that one profile, but not the rest of them. So keep that in mind as well. For our purposes, I'm interested in screen capture for this demo. So we're gonna set mine to the screen capture. That's the profile I named screen capture. Screen capture, you may have something different. Then we have all these settings down here and it can be a little confusing. I actually like to do general brightness first. Use the white and yellow colors to adjust the white, to adjust the general brightness. White LEDs work by turning on red, green, and blue, and so they use three times the power of just having blue on full, or just green on, or just red on. By lowering the brightness, you can get rid of some of the flickering that some of these kits have. You can also fix the flickering by replacing the power supply with one that has a sufficient oomph for your setup. A lot of times, the, the power supply that's shipped with these kits is underpowered to have all the lights set to white. So keep those options in mind. If you replace the power supply, you're gonna have more flexibility in terms of adjusting these settings, because if, as you lower the brightness, how much you can impact the other values decreases as well. So start by looking at white and yellow and setting the general brightness to what you want, then move to minimum light gamma correction. Minimum light is the minimum amount of light that the RGB strips produce just on black. So the higher this value, the brighter behind your screen is, but it also means that there's more white being mixed in with your colors. So the higher this value is, the less oomph, the less, the less powerful a bright blue or a bright red is gonna look. Below it is gamma correction, and gamma correction is kind of the same idea. You're adding more you're, you're adjusting the gamma of the light. This manifests as a whiter white for each color as you raise it up. I have mine set just above all the way to the left. Um, I find that I had to tweak it just a little bit to find just that optimal color, but that, that one's what kind of works for me. Remember that these are sliders, and if you click on the bar the, the horizontal bar, it's gonna make huge jumps. You're gonna to wanna to click on the vertical bar and drag it to find exactly what you want. The minimum light and the gamma correction in adjustment with the general brightness, as you kind of fiddle with those three, you might have to jump back to general brightness and kind of calibrate it a little bit again. So don't be surprised if you have to go back a step and recalibrate something you just did. Once you have those three set up, sensitivity and dynamics are there. I'm gonna be honest, at this point, I still don't really understand what these are supposed to be influencing. I've read through forums from on Reddit and on all the different kind of these just like posts that I've been reading online and nobody's been able to give me an answer that I really believe, not based on what I'm seeing. So I have them set all the way to the left. I'm pretty sure that means that they're at max because if you adjust these values, you'll see the number actually goes down as you move them to the right as opposed to all the other sliders. And that in itself is just another reason why this particular, these, these two values confuse me and I think they probably confuse most people. Um, you can adjust them. Maybe you'll see some sort of slight difference in the way that objects on screen are moving. But as far as I can tell with my tests, they don't influence frames per second and they don't influence CPU utilization. So I just have them set to the highest value, which again, I'm pretty sure is the left. And I've not had any issues. And moving them all the way to the right, I haven't really noticed anything at this point yet either. Um, 
I'll update this if somebody gives me a good explanation for what they do, or if I find something that, you know, changes my opinion on that. But for now, I just leave them there. Saturation and hue are the two that are going to adjust color the most. And so this is changing all the lights kind of together. So you can, once you've set up the capture zones for each individual RGB light, you can now make small modifications to the entire string of lights in terms of adjusting how much color is produced and represented um, and how saturated the light color is. Calibrate each of those together. And then I like to keep smoothing. Uh, smoothing is kind of supposed to be Smoothing is supposed to be taking into account how it trans, how an object moving on screen translates to the next RGB light on the strip. And so the higher the smoothing, the smoother the supposed to calibrate supposed to go. I actually find it a little jarring to push this all the way to the right. I like to put it somewhere in the first quarter, not quite all the way to the left, not quite the middle, kind of somewhere in there. That's what's optimal for me. But as these videos play, you can adjust each of these individual settings to get it to be exactly the way you like. And then again, I'm gonna emphasize this again, hit save settings as you work. Because it, you're gonna be so angry if you make changes to all your different lights and you forgot to save it and then it forgot what you did. Uh, if in the process you make a bunch of changes and you really hate it, the default tabs are here. It'll take you back to the default setting. And they're there. So overall, I hope this helps you understand what these specific tabs do. And I hope the videos that I made, the ones playing in the background, are helpful in getting you calibrated and set up. If anyone has any questions or if they have a different test they'd like me to try and put together, I'm more than happy to work on it. I'm in this with you guys. I love my bias lighting. I love my dynamic ambibox lighting. And I'm always trying to make it work a little bit better, a little bit more immersive for the experience. So again, this is 66 days. Hit subscribe, hit like, watch the videos, share them, all the things. But uh, for now, thanks for watching.